Hi, Bobcats. In this section, we're going to take a look at three different definitions of what could be an acid or a base. The definitions are known after the scientists who proposed them. One of them is called the Arrhenius definition, one of them is Bronsted-Lowry, and then the last one that we'll look at is known as the Lewis definition. These three definitions are shown so that you can compare and contrast them here in this table. Um, the first column is telling us these three different definitions. The second column is what is an acid according to those definitions. And then the third column is showing us what's a base. So for instance, in the Arrhenius definition, an acid is considered uh, a substance that releases H plus ions in water, and a base is a substance that releases OH minus ions in water. Uh, this is probably the first definition of an acid or base that anybody ever sees. I've even walked down the halls in an elementary school near where I live and um, seen posters and things on the, um, the walls in the fifth grade pod um, where they were looking a little bit at acids and bases and they already were associating uh, H plus ions with acids and OH minus ions with bases. As we get a little more sophisticated, um, it turns out that there are other chemicals that follow the pattern of reactivity that acids and bases follow, but maybe they don't have H pluses in them, or maybe they don't have OH minuses in them. And so a couple other definitions have been proposed that allow us to include those compounds. Uh, Bronsted-Lowry proposes that an acid is something that is a proton donor, and a base is something that is a proton acceptor. Lewis, on the other hand, says that an acid is an electron pair acceptor and a base is an electron pair donor. So let's take a little closer look at uh, the Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis definitions. So starting with the Arrhenius definition, uh, which said that an acid is a substance that releases H plus ions in water. Well, here would be an example. You have something like HCl, which is known as hydrochloric acid, and as soon as it hits water, it breaks apart to give us H plus ions and Cl minus ions. Um, so HCl would be an example of an Arrhenius acid. And notice that we put the H right at the beginning of this formula. Um, some other examples of Arrhenius acids might be something like H3PO4 or phosphoric acid. And those hydrogen ions that will ionize are all listed right here at the beginning. Um, there's, this is another uh, Arrhenius acid, which is known as acetic acid. And the ion, the, the hydrogen ion that will come off is listed right there at the front. And then these three other uh, hydrogens that are listed as part of the formula do not ionize. They are not acidic. So these three um, ions or hydrogens that are listed later are not ions. Um, these do not ionize, they're completely stuck to that molecule. And then just for comparison's sake, I wanted to show one more formula, CH4. When the hydrogens are written at the end of the formula, they are not going to ionize, just like those three hydrogens that are in the middle of the acetic acid formula. A base, according to the Arrhenius definition, is something that releases hydroxide ions in water. So the classic example of a base is sodium hydroxide. As soon as sodium hydroxide hits water and dissolves, it breaks apart to give us uh, the sodium ions and the hydroxide ions. And so those hydroxide ions right there are what makes sodium hydroxide a base. Before we jump into the Bronsted-Lowry definition, I'd like to take just a moment to look at what is a proton. Um, if you'll remember back from an earlier chapter when we were looking at protons, electrons, and neutrons, those are the basic particles that make up all atoms. And a hydrogen atom is the simplest atom that we have. In its nucleus, we have a single proton and then orbiting that nucleus, there will be a single electron. We know that there is one of each, 
because the atomic number of um, hydrogen is one. So if we wanted to get just that proton all by itself, we would simply take away the electron. And when we take away that electron, we call it a hydrogen ion. So what's left, that proton, is the same thing as a hydrogen ion. So yes, a proton and a hydrogen ion are just two different names for the same thing. According to the Bronsted-Lowry definition, an acid is a proton donor. But we saw on the previous slide that a proton is the same thing as an H plus ion. So really, the Bronsted-Lowry acids and the Arrhenius acids are pretty much the same thing. So for instance, HCl is, a, um, Arrhenius, is an Arrhenius acid, um, but it's also a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Uh, because HCl can react with water and it gives away this proton. The water molecule accepts the proton and forms this H3O plus complex over on the product side. So really, Bronsted-Lowry and Arrhenius acids are pretty much the same thing. So where Bronsted-Lowry becomes important is with respect to bases. Bases, according to Bronsted-Lowry, are defined as proton acceptors. And so, for instance, ammonia acts as a Bronsted-Lowry base because it will accept a proton from water and make this NH4 plus ion, the ammonium ion, and release hydroxide ions. So we still end up sneaking hydroxide ions in this particular equation for a base, but the hydroxide's not actually coming from the ammonia. The hydroxide started in that water molecule. So um, the, the thing about the Bronsted-Lowry definitions is that they allow us to consider more compounds to be bases. NH3, by the Arrhenius definition, can't be a base because it doesn't have hydroxide ion. But NH3 can be a base by the Bronsted-Lowry definition because it can accept a proton. The Lewis definitions are in terms of electrons. Now this is the same Lewis that came up with Lewis dot structures. So it was all about electrons and electron pairs. So the acid, according to the Lewis definition, is an electron pair acceptor. And the example of an acid that I gave up here is this molecule BCL3. Now, as you're looking at this molecule, hopefully something in your brain is saying, wait a minute, there's a problem with this structure because boron does not have an octet. It's only showing six electrons around it. Well, boron is, uh, or BCL3, is an example of something called an electron deficient compound. There is no way uh, to get another pair of electrons into here because they, they just aren't there if you add up all of the valence electrons from boron and three chlorines. And chlorine, doesn't like to form double bonds and neither does boron. It only wants to form three bonds. So this Lewis dot structure is the best one that we can draw for BCL3, but it leaves kind of this opening, right, where we're missing another pair of electrons according to the octet rule. Well, a base, according to the Lewis definition, is an electron pair donor. And so, once again, ammonia gets to qualify as being a base because it can donate this electron pair that is on the uh, nitrogen to that boron right there. And when a process like this happens, we say it forms a coordinate covalent bond, which is a little bit different kind of bond. Um, the thing that's different here is that both electrons in the bond came from one atom. Normally, we think of covalent bonds as having one electron coming from each of the atoms that are involved, but in this case, they're both coming from nitrogen. But this ability to donate a pair of electrons makes NH3 or ammonia a Lewis base. So to wrap up, we looked at three definitions of acids and bases. The Arrhenius definition is that classic definition that an acid has H plus ions and a base has OH minus ions. The Bronsted-Lowry definition was all about protons and it expands the list of compounds that we consider bases by allowing things like NH3 
um, which can act as a proton acceptor to be uh, considered a base. And then the Lewis definition ex is all about uh, electron pairs and um, it expands what we consider to be an acid um, so that something like that BCL3 molecule um, can be considered an acid because it can accept a pair of electrons.